Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Pastor Brent Oliver, and this is day seven. Emotional 50 days to Pentecost. Uh, we're covering all of the scriptures that deal with the Holy Spirit, especially as Jesus talked and John the Baptist talked about in trying to get an understanding of what Jesus was talking about. Remember yesterday, John had said Jesus would be the one that would be coming after him, and he would baptize in the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus is using these words a lot. As we discover in the scripture on day seven, we entitle this anointing of the Holy Spirit, anointing of the Holy Spirit. Four scriptures I'm going to read today. First one's in the Old Testament. Uh, and it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing, the yoke. A yoke was something that tied uh, two animals together and they would move together. And so, or a yoke of sin would be that Satan's trying to pull us one way, the world's trying to pull us one way, and we're trying to go a different net way now. The yoke there is going to be broken by the anointing. Jesus, uh, in Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it says this, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened, and he, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. So at Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit came upon him. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said. Because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. To release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now this was a quote from uh, the book of Isaiah that Jesus was quoting. And he said, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And so this anointing that came upon Jesus to preach prisoners, recovering sight to the blind, all these things. And finally, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. All of these instances you see about the Holy Spirit and his anointing. You notice that Jesus did not do one miracle until the Holy Spirit descended upon him at his baptism. This, quote, anointing, a word that's not used a lot from the Holy Spirit is what launched Jesus into his public ministry. Anointing, the Greek word charisma, means a special endowment from God. It is a touch. It is rubbing up against God. And his anointing coming upon you in a sense. God um, uh, anointing you. Before this, on his 30 years on the earth, Jesus hadn't preached. He hadn't healed. Or, or time. The same anointing to preach and see many spiritual results. While another pastor preaches and gets very few results. This anointing is a supernatural power and authority in the spirit realm, which brings about supernatural results. And, you know, we could say, oh, I don't believe that. Well, let's come to baptize in the Holy Spirit. Why did the baptism of the Holy Spirit give a special anointing? For this very purpose. It breaks yokes, bondages, and lives. In the 1980s, the church in Argentina was experiencing phenomenal growth. A seminary professor flew there uh, to investigate uh, and doing research to try to find out why this was happening. He was amazed when he saw all of the miracles, uh, church growth, evangelism was taking place, but it was taking place in predominantly Pentecostal churches. The conclusion he came to was that the anointing of the Holy Spirit that came upon people through the baptism in the Holy Spirit was the common denominator. It's not that one person is uh, better than another. It's one person has the touch of God 
in a, maybe you can say, a greater fashion than someone else. Well, not only did he publish a book about his findings, he subsequently became the Holy Spirit himself. He served the Lord for decades, understanding that the Holy Spirit was in him. And now, for the first time, he was experiencing the miracle power of the Holy Spirit through his life. And it all happened after he received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Again, if Jesus needed the Son of God, if Jesus, excuse me, the Son of God needed the Holy Spirit, how much more do we? Well, those are thoughts that I'd like to leave with you today. Uh, search the scriptures and see that uh, the more that we desire to see God flow through our life, the more we need the anointing of God, His touch, His anointing, His rubbing up against us, His uh, covering of us, the more we need the anointing. Today, Cassie is going to lead us in a song of worship. And so let me just encourage you to take a moment here and just enjoy the presence of the Lord. Lord, just anoint me for your purposes, for your kingdom, and for your glory. God bless you today as we now uh, worship together. There's nothing. 